Hello, today I want to show you the habitat of the convict cichlid. Ambatitlana nigrofasciata is actually a widespread species, and if you're keeping fish for more than 10 years, you likely had this fish at home at one point. Convict cichlids are found in a variety of habitats, but this one is quite interesting. It lies in the shadow of the Poas volcano, near the capital city of San Jose in Costa Rica. Poas is actually a highly active volcano and has a crater lake way up at 2,700 meters or 9,000 feet above sea level. This lake has a pH of less than 1, so there are no fish in it. Downslope of the volcano on the north side are streams, rivers, and several other crater lakes, and we can find several cichlid species here. Just north of Poas is the Laguna Ule, which is actually also a crater lake. Unfortunately, we did not have time to hike down and see what cichlids are here at this time. A little bit further, almost down in the lowland, is the Laguna Rio Cuarto. This is also a crater lake and is very deep and still active. Methane emissions actually at times kill all the fish in this lake and it gets recolonized by a small stream that connects it to the nearby river. We found six species of fish snorkeling in this lake, including three cichlid species. The walls of the crater have dense forest and a lot of riparian vegetation hanging down from the steep slopes. Near the surface were small groups of 6 to 10 Alfaro cultratus, a common life bearer in Costa Rica. These always seem to stick to the overhanging trees and a lot of structure, where they are safer from kingfishers and the predatory fish in the lake. They are definitely more surface oriented than the other life bearer, which is a molly, Pocilia gilli. These are very common in the lake and pretty much occupy all of the shallow areas. They feed on the algae on the rocks and sunken branches and trees. They don't really seem to have any coordinated schools or groups. They just seem to wander around everywhere and when they start to feed on a rock, more of them get together and feed in the same place. There are also some schools of what I assume is Brycon costaricensis. They are mostly in deeper water and feed off insects on the surface. They are very good swimmers, and I can see how they can easily recolonize this lake from the small outflowing stream if the fish in the lake were to get killed off by volcanic gases. How the slow-moving molly get up the rather strong flow from the stream is a bit harder to imagine, but they could also be much more resistant to the events that kill off the brycon. But let's get to the cichlids. There are guapote cichlids in the lake. They are juvenile parachromis dovi, and I did not see any in adult coloration. Either that is because none of them had matured yet, or the larger individuals are just in deeper water. Some juveniles, up to around hand length, were patrolling the shallows and hunting the smaller cichlids and of course the live bearers. I regret not having the time to see if some very large individuals are in the lake, because I've never seen a large pair of guapote with their young. Something for the next visit. Convict cichlids are everywhere here. And I have to say thank you to Willem Hines, because these are now split and should be Amatitlana cana now, the southeastern form of the convict cichlid Amatitlana nigrofasciata. In this lake, they are really tiny. The females breed in less than 3 cm size, just over 1 inch. The males are about double the size of the females. When they are not breeding, they are very dark in color, sort of dark grey with black stripes. When they are breeding, you can see the light gray, dark gray convict pattern a bit better. When they have young, they seem to stick to a relatively safe area where the rocks are a bit larger and it is easier to defend the brood. If something larger approaches, the parents just signal the babies to dive down onto the substrate. They are of course amazing parents and really fun to watch when they are guarding their young, which is why this cichlid used to be so popular. This sequence is edited down, but the fish remained in this rock assemblage for around 5 minutes, before moving the fry to a similar area about an arm's length away. They certainly avoid places where there are no larger rocks and deeper crevices for the fry to hide. Both parents actively defend the area and will team up to push out larger guapote that approach the nest. A few steps away, we could find the next pair with their young. So their territory is not only limited by finding the right kind of safe substrate, but also by the disputes with their neighbors that have similar concerns. In the 1980s, when there was just less choices in the hobby, this was the go-to Central American cichlid that you would see everywhere. Maybe today this species has lost its popularity a bit, but I try to show you the habitats of some of the most common aquarium fish in nature, 
and besides the firemouth cichlid and common swordtail, this is the most common Central American aquarium fish. In the shallows, there are all kinds of fish moving about, and at a similar size, they all share the same space. It is here I first noticed some cream-colored small cichlids with a black bar. These are juvenile Neutroplus nematopus, in this place at the very southern end of their range. I was excited to see these fish, and I was expecting this fish to be more in faster flowing water. So I started looking for adults and found them in deeper water. While the pairs of convicts were breeding anywhere and around knee-deep water, the Neutroplus pairs were slightly deeper, maybe hip-deep. Unlike the convicts, they prefer to lay their eggs more hidden on the underside of rocks. So the pairs would usually have their nest adjacent to a huge boulder, something football-sized or well larger. The cream-colored juveniles become gray-colored adults with a vertical black bar, but when they are breeding, they undergo a crazy color change and instead become black fish with a white vertical bar. There were several pairs defending nests on the edges of these large boulders. Their nests are dug out from under the rock and are quite large and deep. At this depth, they are more larger fish, and they had their hands full keeping other curious cichlids away. I think that is in part due to the lack of cover. Because there are not so many safe spaces in this habitat, many fish tend to dash into the shadows of the larger boulders, so there is a constant flow of other fish arriving in their territory, not really to threaten their nest, but just because it is the safest space in the area. This of course keeps the Neutroplus very busy. These cichlids are much more picky with their nesting site, and in this habitat they are also smaller than usual, but larger than the convicts. They are less common in the lake, and I found only four nesting pairs of Neutroplus in the short time I was visiting the lake. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, make sure to share and subscribe to this channel, and see you shortly for the next one.